This only happens two seasons out of the year, in the fall and in the spring. And today, we're going to be catching some of these stocked catfish out of these Arizona urban ponds. And I'm gonna be teaching you guys some tips along the way so you can go out there and catch some yourself. My calculations are correct. This was stocked yesterday. So we're gonna see if that is true or not. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, but let's give it a shot. As I said, guys, the ponds have been stocked. They have been filled up here in Arizona. This video is kind of going to be more of like a tutorial, I guess you can kind of say, uh, to help you guys go out there and get them. So starting off, let's say you guys have never fished any of these ponds before, ever. You just see them on the side of the road and you always wonder. So these ponds are stocked in two different seasons, once in the fall and once in the spring. They are stocked multiple times during that season. And if you wanna be able to see when these ponds get stocked, all you need to do is go to AZ, Department of Fish and Game website, and they actually have the list of the stocking schedule laid out for you to check. So you can basically go on there, go on the map and see which pond is closest to you. They all get about the same amount of fish. The bigger ones usually get some more fish. And that is how you find out if there's fish even being put into these ponds. Now you see me, nailing in these rod holders here and uh, there's been plenty of people that got the rod pulled in you want to make sure that is not you that is the main goal you find your pond you find out where you're going to go and you're kind of wondering what to use for bait what to use as your setup i'm going to show you guys a couple of my favorites and some more suggestions that may work uh, for you as well so for these catfish they typically stock them from about a pound up to even 10 and 12 pounds those are usually pretty rare uh, but the most common you're going to catch is around a pound to three pounds um, so i would suggest a rod anywhere from medium to medium heavy action usually go with 14 to 20 pound test whatever you feel most comfortable with and that should be plenty to handle these stocked catfish next leading into your setup so there are so many different ways you can do this and since we're in a pond, it really doesn't matter as much as if we were in like a lake or a river because it's a pond. There's no current. You don't really have to worry about very many aspects. That being said, you can't go wrong with your standard sliding sinker rig. So I have a one ounce weight, which honestly is not needed. You could probably do a half ounce if you wanted to, down to a small barrel swivel. And this is just to avoid line twist because when you do hook these fish, they do the death roll. <laughs> and they can get you really messed up. But that is just weight enough to where you can cast it out and uh, get offshore. If there is no wind and you're not casting very far, you could even do this weightless. Just tie this hook directly to your line. As for hooks, three to four aught is usually good if you're using J hooks. If you're using circle hooks, I suggest a size five aught because um, that seems to be about the perfect balance for these channel cats. However, today we are using a treble hook right there, and that is because of the bait that we are using today, which is one of my favorites for these stocked fish. You guys have seen me use it before. The good old striker bait. All of these fish have been raised in a hatchery, which means they've grown up eating pellets, probably some bugs that have fallen into the tank from time to time again but they are pellet fed fish they have not hunted in the wild they don't know what that's like they still have that instinct inside of them but for the most part they are used to eating smelly fish pressed pellets these channel cats will typically eat something a lot smellier rather than a piece of fresh cut fish in here although that does work some of my favorite baits for these fish include chicken livers you can get that at the grocery store hot dogs you can also get that at the grocery store bread and corn they will also eat worms but out of all those out of all the baits i've used for some reason this striker punch bait has been the absolute best at catching these stocked catfish don't know why that's just how it goes all you do is take your treble hook and then i have a little handy dandy tool here uh, for me and then you just bury your hook you can use a stick for this as well bury your hook in there and then pull at a slight angle and you will have a nice little glob of punch bait there if there are a lot of panfish in your urban pond they will peck this stuff off every single cast every single cast along with your hot dogs along with your chicken liver along with your bread your corn your worms everything if that is the case i do recommend catching some fresh bait such as bluegill it does not work as well for getting bites but it will keep those 
panfish from being able to peck it off your hook. So for this bait, this pond here, it's kind of tricky to predict where these fish are gonna be. Kind of just have to trial and error it. I like to go straight out in this pond. So I'm gonna go right there, let it get all the way to the bottom and put it in the rod holder. And that is just the standard sliding sinker rig. Another way I like to catch these fish is with a big old bobber. So if you guys have been following the channel for a while, I have a couple videos of me catching these fish on a good old bobber. And uh, it is so much fun just to watch this thing surf around. So we have that today. We are just using a big slip bobber. I ran out of bobber stops. So I have a rubber band tied on here, which does the job. We have a half ounce weight to kind of hold this bobber straight up in the water. And then we have another treble hook because we are using punch bait on this rod as well. And with these, you can kind of cover some more water, let it drift in the current, cover more water where the fish are gonna be. The biggest thing with these stocked fish is they typically tend to hold in like one area of the pond. Not always, but sometimes. So you've done your research, you've done your rig, you've got your rod, you've got your bait. You're now at the pond, you've casted your line out. Now this is probably the most important part. When you start getting bites, you need to hone in on that same spot. Because like I just mentioned, these fish are often very spot specific. They will sit in one section of the pond. There are certain times of the days where they'll start moving around a little bit more, but generally they will sit in one, probably, I don't know, 20 to 50 yard section of the pond. So when you find that section, make sure every time you rebate and you recast, you are hitting the same section. That will give you the best chance at catching a bunch of fish. Okay, let's get rod number two in here. All right, same thing on this rod. I have my bobber about five, six feet deep. And it is fun to use a bobber just because these ponds are not that deep anyway. So using a bobber, you don't really have to go as deep on your bobber stop. We'll go right out there. Our bobber is standing nice and straight and we are fishing. We are fishing. But as I was saying, oh, here we go. This rod, one on the bottom. Fish on. Look at that, guys. Look at that. This is what I'm describing. Look at that. <laughs> My dad is just showing up at the perfect time, too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, I think I'm going to let this guy go here. I'm going to show him to you guys. This is on the striker, just as I was mentioning. Ugh. I do suggest the net if you're not hip on handling catfish because they can be quite the nuisance to get off your hook. Put my hand under this guy and kind of cradle him from his belly. And boom, we've just landed our first fish of the day here. I'm going to get him unhooked so I don't have to deal with that. I do recommend pliers or forceps or something because these fish can be very annoying to get off the hook. And that's about the average size, guys. That's about the average size, pound and a half. But uh, we're gonna get this guy out of here, hopefully the first of many. And there he goes. There we go, we got some more bait. And it doesn't take much on there, guys. It does not take much. Let's get this back. We'll go a little more to the right this time. Already getting bit on the bottom, guys. We got another. We got another, and it can be like this. Oh, we got a nice one. Punch bait. Yeah. It's like stinky catfish bait. Here we go, guys. And we got a nicer one this time. This is how it can happen in these stocked ponds. Once you find where these fish are at, you can just pluck them one by one. Oh yeah, this one's much nicer. This one's much nicer. You didn't bring a net, did you? No? Jeez, this one is much nicer here, guys. Ugh. Look at that. Look at that. Nice fatty right there. Now, since he did swallow that circle hook, or not the circle hook, the, uh, the treble hook, we are going to keep this guy 
Um, like I said, if they swallow that treble hook, they usually don't do very well after. So we're gonna get this guy on the stringer. Limit here is two fish. We're gonna keep an eye on the rods and uh, hopefully get some more. It seems like the bite's on, so. If you guys are enjoying the video, be sure and hit the subscribe button. We just hit 15K like before I finished editing this. Let's push for 17K before the end of the year. Thank you again for the support. It really does mean a lot to me. Enjoy the rest of the video. If you guys are not getting a bite within the first 15, 20 minutes in these little ponds like this, it's best to cast in a different location and see if you can start getting bites. That is the most important part is just kind of finding where they're sitting at. That's why I brought the bobber today. Um, just so we can locate these fish. You need assistance? That's definitely a freshly stocked one. And this is how big some of these fish can be. I said before, guys, these, these guys are on the upper hand for sure. He's got it in his throat. He ain't going nowhere. Let me grab some ammo. Jeez. That is dad's fish. Nice one. Really thick. Look at that, that's your first one too, of the day. As far as the best time to go after these fish, it can be really good early morning, it can be really good at night, it could also be really good midday. It's really just kind of random with that. I prefer early morning because there's less people, but go whenever you can, you're gonna find some fish. But for the most part, a lot of people are gonna catch and keep these fish. So the, the hottest fishing is usually from a week, a week within the stock. Well, this one's gonna be out of commission, guys. I can barely fish one rod anyway and see if maybe we can get another takedown. We've already gotten a couple bites on the bobber. This is one of the most exciting ways to catch them, in my opinion. Look at that, straight under. I got him. Straight under. Straight under, yeah. Straight under. I hope you guys could see that from that angle. Straight under. He does not feel as big, but then again, I can't tell. That bobber just went whoop straight under. This is the, the hard part with the rubber band. I can't get it through my my eyelet, so I gotta swing them from here. <laughs> and this is one of those ones on the smaller side I was telling you guys about. Perfectly in the corner. And there he is, nice little channel cat. He bit almost immediately. Pop him back in there. All right, poking that in again. Just like that. You guys saw the glob before, it was not big, it was so little. Just gonna lob that. It is kind of tricky to get it to stay on sometimes, so I'm being delicate. I have to like take down my sunglasses and make sure, look at that. Was that the, a turtle or was that a fish? Nope, that's a fish. Look at that again. I'm gonna say that's a fish. I thought it was a turtle, guys. <laughs> it's another small guy, he's shaking his head. <laughs> with those bobber takedowns like i was saying it's just so much fun to catch them like that bobber fishing helps you get them uh, before they swallow it so all right let's get that hook out just like that another little baby channel get it right out there we're just going to drift with that wind we have the nice breeze that's going to help us cover water i'm just going to hold it this time let's see what happens Guys, with a good breeze, you can cover the whole pond, really, if you wanted to. Look at all this water that we covered to find this fish. Oh, there's a bump. Got him. That was a subtle bite right there. Oh, Dad, you got tagged. Dad got tagged. We're just murdering him on the bobber, guys. We'll say these are the small ones, but I don't, I don't mind. Ooh, and they have some nasty spikes like that. Dad's got one now. All right, there's my runt. There's dad's fish, a little bit nicer than mine. Jeez. Guys, these signs here are on every single community fishing water just so the regulations are in place. So if you were to keep rainbow trout, channel catfish, bass, sunfish, everything, they show you the limits and then they show you that you need a valid not community fishing license that's not a thing anymore just a general fishing license it just says that you are subject to the rules and regulations and that is the website right there where you can look up the stocking schedule 
uh, or whatever you need. So if you guys are near one of these ponds and you want to check all this out, uh, go up to the sign and, and learn some information. Safe to say it is going as planned so far. It's not always like this, guys. Uh, we kind of just got here on a really good day, but we're catching them on the bottom. We're catching them on the bobber and we're catching them on the striker. So we're still getting bit. Dad just hooked up again. <laughs> I'm going to get back in there and see if I can get some more. Straight. I'm going to kind of pull that back so it's right in the middle. These, these tilapia are getting blitzed by bass, guys. Oh, we got Mr. Turtle coming to the bobber. Can we beat him? Getting bit. There's one. Look at that. I mean, I can't, I can't keep them off, guys. And my recommendation, when you're on a bite like this, just stay on it as long as you can. You don't know how long it's going to last. This guy's pulling drag here. Thinking he's a tuna. This is actually a nicer one from what we were catching before. Oh my goodness. It is just fun. It is fun. Right there. 2023 urban stocked catfish ponds. You guys go get yourself son. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Let's get this guy out of here.